Hi, my name is Exley, and I'm from Christ Heritage Church. And while we uh, recognize the providence of God in spreading His gospel message through online videos, uh, this video may be used by God to edify you and to encourage you. But we believe that it is important for a Christian to attend a, to a local church. We believe that it is important for a Christian to be a member of a local church where he can exercise the ministerial gifts given by God. We believe that it is important for a Christian to sit under the preaching of a local pastor. And so the preacher in this video cannot and should not replace the office of the pastor in your, in your local church. Uh, it is our prayer that this video may help you, but again, we strongly insist that you don't miss out in the ordinary means of grace being done in your local church. Thank you. In the past week, the whole Philippines grieved uh, over the murders of two, um, great, two family members of the Gregorio family, uh, Sonia Gregorio and her son, Frank Gregorio. You've probably uh, seen the video online. Uh, the video of, uh, it, it, well, that video is, was made public. Um, the video shows a policeman shooting both an older woman, who's Sonia Gregorio, and her son in their, in their heads, sa ulo, in front of their families, in front of even the daughter of the policeman. Of course, there's a deeper story behind that, like, right, right, like their um, argument again, uh, about the right of way. Uh, but in the video, specifically, you can hear the daughter of the policeman screaming, basically saying, my father is a policeman. To which the older woman responded saying, I don't care, mockingly singing a um, familiar song. Now, next thing you'll see in the video is the, uh, you'll see the policeman basically firing the gun. Pinotok sa ulo, tigalawang barrel sa kanilang dalawa. Now, uh, many people condemned the act of the policeman. But sadly, you know, um, there are those who actually justified his crime. There are those who, who praised him uh, because of what he did. Saying that if that happens to me, if, that, if someone mocks me, if, if I were a policeman, I would have done the same thing. I mean, that's sad. You know, that there are those kinds of people who may say that. Um, now, could it be that those people who, who say those things are truly evil people? Or are they misinformed? Have they not seen the entire story, or in that case, the entire video? Do they not have knowledge about what truly happened to be able to come up with such deduction? Well, we as Christians are also called to praise someone. Not men, not evil men, but our good and heavenly Father. And as we gain knowledge about Him, as we read the Bible story, we will indeed, we will definitely be praising our Father. Our passage is Jude verse 25. And we have read the entire uh, Jude, uh, the, the chapter of Jude. But I'd like to read this uh, verses 24 to 25 again. And then I'll pray and then I'll start. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling, to keep you from stumbling, and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you, O oh Lord, for this opportunity to preach your word. Lord, may you alone be our teacher. May you speak to us this morning. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. By the way, I've read, I, I read from uh, NASB, not ESB. 
So we have been studying uh, the letter of Jude and big portion of this letter was his warning to the church, warning that he felt more, that, that it is more important than writing about their common salvation. He felt it necessary to tell them about the unnoticed false teachers who have crept in in their local church, in their own local community, letting them know that they are basically in danger. No? Letting all the churches and every time that they are in danger if they are not careful. That some of them in the church may have already been persuaded, may have been already been misled, that they are tasked, that they have a task also to contend for the faith and to snatch these people from the flames. And while Jude altered his plan of writing their common salvation, writing about their common salvation, actually he still wrote about it, again in verse 24, parang in, ginawa pa rin niya eh. After all the warnings, no? napakahaba ng verses uh, describing the false teachers, but he, he, he still found a way to, 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 still, to still write about their common salvation, that God is able to preserve his people and God is able to make his people holy and blameless. And that is something that all sinners who share the grace of God in Christ have. That is all, I mean, meron tayo lahat nun. No? We are all saved by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. We are all part of the church of God whom God will keep and whom God will sanctify. So amidst all the warnings, meron pa ring assurance. No? He, he, he did not end the, the, the letter in that note. Nasasabihin niya, okay, merong mga parating dyan, okay, bahala na kayo ha. Or he did not end with that command saying that keep yourselves in the love of God and that's it, goodbye. No. Nagbigay pa siya ng assurance sa ating lahat. No? Malinaw. And there are basically gospel promises that were mentioned here, specifically in verse 24. That there are truths where Christians can draw strength from. And again, Jude beautifully ends his letter with this assurance in the form of what we call a doxology. When we say doxology, it means the author's expression of praise. Expression of praise. And with that one verse, verse 24, saying all that God can do, God is able to do, all he can do in the next verse is to praise God. Verse 24, sinabi niya kung ano yung kayang gawin ng Diyos. Verse 25, sinabi niya yung ano yung magagawa namin knowing na kayang gawin ito ng Diyos sa atin. To praise God. But Jude also was showing us that this is something that we too, tayo din mismo, should be doing. If we indeed share the same salvation, if we are all recipients of the grace of God, what else do we share with one another as being members of the church? That is my, cha- that is my message this morning na gusto ko i-advance sa bawat isa. Our common salvation should cause us to praise God through Christ. Our common salvation should cause us to praise God through Christ. Our common salvation summons us, summons the church to be gathered together to praise God. Ang kaligtasang meron tayo, ang dapat dahilan natin ng ating pagpupuri sa Diyos sa pamamagitan ni Kristo. As Christians, we share the same privilege of praising our one true God. Now, what important facts should we know when we talk about praise? Who are we praising? That is my first point. Object of praise. Importante to. I mean, kung di natin kilalang object of praise natin, then sino ang pinipraise natin? Marahil iba ang ating ginoglorify. Kailangan natin maintindihan to. At malinaw na malinaw, that Jude has highlighted this in his letter, who our object must be. And secondly, what should be our response? Ano ba dapat ang attitude natin when we praise God? That is, the, that is my last point, response of praise. Let us consider the first one, object of praise. Verse 25, to the only God. Kita natin yung shift, right? Shift from the false teachers 
verse 17, to the church, verse 17, para sa church, to beloved, to my beloved, sabi niya. That's the church. And in verse 25, to the only God, our Savior. In fact, it's in verse 24 kaagad eh. Now to Him, who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us blameless before His presence with great joy. Verse 25, to the only God, our Savior. Now, the false teachers are preaching false doctrines. Klaro yun sa atin. Kung meron man nabugbog dito sa letter na to, these are the false teachers. Sobrang bugbog na bugbog sa description ng false teachers na to. I've mentioned many times that Jude could have stopped, right, in verse 4 by calling them ungodly and that's it. But he, he nagdala pa siya ng mga Old Testament characters who, who, who are familiar to the church na alam nilang masasamang tao itong mga to. And Jude, basically, used these characters for them to really understand what kind of teachers these are. So the false teachers are clearly preaching false doctrines. And the object of their doctrines is their false god. False god nila yun. I mean, outright, they deny our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. We've read that. They deny Him. They may not deny Him in their words, but obviously in their works. It says, they pervert the grace of God. Thinking that the grace of God will allow you is your license to sin. They, that in itself is a denial of the Lordship of Christ. So the object of their teaching is their own idea of who God is. Their false God. And obviously too, Jude spent many verses describing these false teachers for us as well to identify that they too, the false teachers, are not the ones whom you should praise, church. Hindi sila. Hindi rin ang mga tinuturo ng false teachers na to. Mas lalo itong mga false teachers na to. You should not glorify these people. You should not praise these people. It is not the false teachers nor their God who is to be exalted, who is to be praised. It is Jesus Christ to the only God. It is not the rebellious Israel who is to be exalted. It is the true Israel. He is the faithful Israel who succeeded where Israel failed. It is not the fallen angels who rejected authority. Hindi sila yung kailangan nating i-exalt dito. Yes, they were angels. But it is Jesus Christ who perfectly obeyed the will of the Father to the point of death on the cross. And it's not even the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah who indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire. Hindi rin si Cain, hindi rin si Balaam, hindi si Korah, but it is Christ who did not pursue unnatural desires but pursued the will of God by living a perfect life here on earth. It's not the dangerous hidden reefs. Remember how, 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 how Jude described these false teachers as the hidden reefs. Sila yung mga nakatagong bato na naninira ng mga bangka. Hindi nakikita ng mga nagbabangka, tatamaan na nila yung bato, lulubog sila. Yun yung mga false teachers na to. And, and, and it's not those hidden reefs are to be praised here. But it is the rock of refuge that is to be praised. It is not the selfish shepherds who feed, who feed themselves who are exalted here. It is the good shepherd. The good shepherd who makes us lie down on green pastures. The one who, who, who loves his sheep, who knows his sheep, who graciously feeds his sheep. And it's not even the wandering stars. Remember the wandering stars? Ting, pag tinignan mo, napakaganda, pero pag inabot na ng dilim, wawala. It's the bright morning star. From the words of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 2, Christ is the blazing sun of righteousness. Araw. Napakalakas ng sikat ng araw ng Diyos. That is to be exalted forever. Bakit si Kristo ini-exalt natin dito? Why is it Jesus Christ when Jude says to the only God? Doesn't that refer to the Father? 
we, we believe in, in the doctrine of the Trinity. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. We are able to come to the Father's presence only through the mediation of Christ. Sa pamamagitan ni Cristo, only through the person and work of Jesus Christ. It is only on the basis of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross that we are able to enter that peaceful relationship with God. It is only on the basis of His perfect work that we are able to have this privilege praising and worshiping God. Just sinabi ni Christ sa John chapter 10, verse 9, I am the door. Ako ang pintuan. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. It is only through Christ that we share, that we share this eternal privilege of everlasting praise of God. To God belong all the glory. He's in sabi ni Judito. He ended this letter ascribing the glory of God. Ascribing the glory, saying that all the glory belongs to God, belongs to Christ. Meaning all praises, lahat ng credit goes to Him. Just like the author of Hebrews when he said in chapter 1 verse 3, Christ is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. Hindi natin pwede sabihin na ginoglorify natin ang Father, pero ang Son hindi. As we glorify the Son, we glorify the Father because the Son glorifies the Father because the Father glorifies the Son. To Him belongs the majesty, Jude says. Meaning all the beauty, lahat ng kaganda, lahat ng greatness ay makikita sa, kay Kristo. Hindi mo makikita ang Diyos Ama, for God, the Father is spirit, but Christ is there. He is the exact imprint. He is the invisible. He is the uh, radiance of the glory of God. To Him belongs dominion, sabi ni Jude. He has jurisdiction over the world, the whole world. Hari siya. He is king. Everyone and everything will bow down to Him. That's what Paul says as well in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 22 to 23. And He put all things under Christ's feet and gave Him, Christ, as head over all things to the church, which is His, which is his body, the fullness of Him who fills all in all. To Him belongs all authority, sabi rin ni Jude. All power. Hindi siya ruling king na walang power. He is the king who is unchallengeable. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, that Christ is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. If Jude's doxology is not enough for you, that he is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us blameless. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, and you will see the authority of Christ, the power of Christ, that he is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. Christ reflects the image of the Father. What we can say about the glory, the majesty, dominion, and authority of the Father, we can also say about the Son. We can also say about the Holy Spirit. And so in this letter, Jude ascribes, ina-ascribe niya yung glory, yung dominion, yung power, yung authority sa Diyos. Hindi, hindi ibig sabihin nun na ina-add niya yung glory as if wala noon ang Diyos before. As if God did not have glory, as if God did not have dominion, did not have authority nor power. No. He is declaring these things. Jude was declaring that these are already true of God. That is what ascribing to God is, to God means. And this is not something that is true of God just now. I mean, during that time. Just because, oh, I was enlightened because of what God is able to do. And so I will ascribe to Him all the glory. No. Jude says, God's glory God's majesty, God's dominion, and God's authority exists before all time and now. 
and forever. This is who Jesus Christ is. Your false teachers cannot keep you. In fact, they will make you stumble. The church can help you indeed. The church can have their own pastors, leaders, church members who can help you, who, can, who are called to help you and snatch you out of the flames. Your pastor can indeed do that. Your deacons can do that. Your brothers and sisters in the church can do that. But at the end of the day, they don't have the power. They don't have the authority. They don't have the majesty. And they are not credited. They cannot be credited. The heavens and the earth are not under their feet. The glory does not belong to them. It is only God who is able. That is the object of our praise. He is able through the work of Jesus Christ. Hindi mga bula ang propeta o mga guro ang magbibigay sa atin ng assurance at seguridad. Si Kristo lamang ang makakapagbigay nito. And the more we put our trust and faith in Christ, the more the other substitutes, whatever those are, ungodly they may be, those things become uninteresting to us. You know, like, like a young man who falls in love and who marries and is no longer interested in his old girlfriend. You know, when you marry someone, that means you're not gonna be, you're not, you're not gonna be interested sa ibang babae. Ganon din sa babae. When you marry your husband, that means that you're not gonna be interested with other men. So is the believer who keeps himself in the love of God. So is the believer who is kept by God. So that is my challenge for everyone this morning, that we should be caught up in the glories of the Savior, knowing that He has all dominion, He has all the glory, majesty, and authority. Be caught up in that so you will not turn to ungodly substitutes. So you will not turn to Satan's substitutes. You know, if the church that time was so caught up in the glories of the Savior, then they will not be interested in such false teachings. Mailagay natin ang ating buong tiwala sa Panginoong Heso Kristo. If Christ is the Savior, if Christ is the Redeemer, if Christ is the Keeper, if He is the Sanctifier, then why would the church even consider the teachings of other false teachers? Why would you even open up your church doors to those who preach a different gospel? Or do our faith and trust in Christ make us resist such teachings? Does it make us solely rely on Christ and His Word? Now, pwede natin sabihin na marami naman akong alam sa theology and that, we, that I understand what false teachings are. I do understand what the true gospel is. Naintindihan ko yun. But you know, we may be so dependent even on good teachers, even on good preachers, that we again make them gods. We may be ascribing too much glory on earthly teachers, on earthly pastors, on earthly preachers instead of Christ. We may be treating men as gods. See, the letter does not end focusing on the church. It doesn't end focusing on the leaders of the church. It ends drawing the people's eyes away from themselves, focusing them on Christ. Baka sumobrang pagiging Calvinist natin. Gawin nating just si John Calvin. And we forget to look to Christ and be Christ-like in our dealings with those who are not Calvinist. Baka sumobrang pagiging idol natin. Kay John MacArthur. And we call others who do not hold to, 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 to his theology as heretics. Porque hindi naniniwala sa parehong paniniwala. Baka tawagin natin mga heretics. 
And we again forget to look to Christ and be Christ-like in our dealings with these brothers and sisters. Mag-ingat tayo. No, just like Jude's warning. Hindi man false teachers ang mga ito, pero baka gawin din nating mga Diyos. Remember, to Christ belongs all the glory, all the majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Let me echo what Psalm chapter 146 verse 3 says, Put not your trust in princes. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. Yung son of man dito talks about human. Sa ibang konteksto, iba yung son of man. Pero dito sa samis na to, he was talking about mga tao, wag mong ilagay sa kanila ang buong tiwala mo at pananampalataya mo. Walang salvation doon. Put your faith in trust in Christ and not in men. You know, years ago, there have been a lot of, uh, I mean, women who talagang uh, naglabas ng kanilang mga testimony uh, against Ravi Zacharias, uh, whom they have reported na mayroong uh, sexual, may mga pangyayaring uh, hindi ka nais-nais, uh, sexual molestation uh, by the uh, the late apologist Ravi Zacharias. Now, hindi natin makakaila no, na marami talaga ang, sa ating mga Kristiyano ang talagang natulungan ni, ni Ravi. Specifically in the field of apologetics. Hindi natin makakaila yun, right? Pero if, if dumating sa point na kagaya nito, that something happened and the man cannot defend himself anymore, and you know that it na, na, na siya ay uh, pinaratangan na siya ay may nangyaring sexual sa ibang mga babae in the past years and he denied it publicly in 2017 but then now the organization says that those allegations were true so if you were someone uh, who, who, who held the late apologist in a high pedestal and you see this happening. Na in his, sa kanyang pagiging tao, na siya ay nahulog. Kung, kung masyado mo siyang tinaas noon, na ngayon nakita mo nangyayari sa kanya ngayon, ito. Marahil ikaw ay madala. Marahil madala ka ng alon at ikaw din ay bumagsak. Kung masyado ang iyong pagtingin sa kanya, so let me remind everyone. Thankfully, our faith does not depend on anyone. On any pastor? On any celebrity teachers? Our faith depends on Christ alone. For He is only, He is our only Savior. And He is the only one who can keep us from stumbling. So lahat ng glory, dominion, majesty, authority ascribe natin to that one who deserves all. Let us not forget who saved us and who gets all the credit for saving us. So God, through Jesus Christ, is the object of our praise. But what kind of attitude should we have to have a proper response of praise? That is my last point, response of praise. So upon declaring the works of God, in keeping the church and making the church blameless in his eyes, Jude responded in this doxology, telling us how we should also respond upon knowing these things, upon being reminded of the greatness of God, upon being reminded of the great works of God. Same thing that Paul did in Ephesians. Tita natin to sa mga sulat ni Paul, napakarami after stating every spiritual blessing that the church has in Jesus Christ, and after he mentions about the love of God that is incomprehensible, but God made it comprehensible for his church, he ended with a doxology saying, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly 
than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us to him be the glory in the church and in christ jesus throughout all generations forever and ever amen upon knowing these things i love paul's doxology in the end of romans in the end of his letter doon sa romans 11 sorry romans chapter 11 after he mentions the the, the electing work of God, that God has chosen His people, and how He sovereignly preserved a remnant. Paul ends with a praise in Romans eleven thirty six. Sabi niya, for from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. To Him be glory forever. Amen. Nakikita ba natin yung mga response ng mga faithful ones na ito? Can we see their responses to what God is able to do? The ones who understood the works of God, they praise God. Gino glorify nila ang Panginoon. You see, theology, yung understanding natin of who God is, theology must ultimately, gaya na paulit-ulit sinasabi ni Steve Lawson, no? theology must ultimately lead to doxology. Theology must naturally inform our doxology. I mean, in your praises, you will, be, you will be uttering the words of God. You will be uttering what you know about God. So technically, your theology must inform your praises, must inform your doxology. Your doxology must be driven by right theology. Kumbaga, right theology must produce right living. Right theology must produce church unity, yes, in order to fight wrong theology. But also, right theology must naturally produce praises. It must naturally produce doxology. And this is why, this is why every worship time we end the service with a doxology. Sabay-sabay tayo na nagpe-pray sa ating Panginoon. Why? Because af- that is our response to the theology that we have heard. That is the response that w- of, uh, uh, in the sermon that we have heard, that we have learned. So the overall intention of theology is to lead His people to the praise of God. Yun yung intention ng kaalaman. But this is not something... I mean, because we are sinners, this is not something that is uh, baga, parang inherent in us, that comes to us immediately. Hindi, hindi ka agad tayo basta-basta nagpe-praise eh. May, may, may ganun tayo because of our sins. The problem is that we don't usually automatically praise God. I mean, He deserves it. He deserves all the praise. But the problem is we don't automatically do that with words and with our deeds. Hindi tayo nagkakaroon ng kagustuhang purihin ang Panginoon. We can see how Jude told the church in his time that there are false teachers in their midst, that they can be misled, that some of them may have already been misled, and these false teachers are really cunning, and you can compare them to those evil evil ones in the past. And so not until you realize that the church can be in danger, Not until you realize that in your own might, you are unable to save yourself from these dangers. Not until you realize that you cannot keep yourself from stumbling. That there are indeed outside forces that may cause you stumble. But ultimately, it is us who cause ourselves to stumble. And not until we realize that we cannot stand in the presence of God, more so as a holy person because of our sins, not until you realize that it is God Himself who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before His presence, you won't find any reason to praise God. I mean, He doesn't need to remind us. He should be praised for who He is. Pero because of our sinfulness, a Jew had to remind the church, you guys are in danger and you can't keep yourselves from stumbling. To the only God who can keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless, He's the only one who can do it. So all glory, all praises belong to Him. This, because if you can do it, then the glory belongs to you. But you can't do it. It is only God. Have we realized that? 
Ariel is mad at inyo. Na, hindi siya automatic sa atin eh. And we have to realize these things pa, which we already know. But whenever we hear it, pabalik tayo doon. Sa, 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 doon sa experience na yun, that we are reminded again of the redemption that God has given us. And so we will praise Him. Kaya necessary sa atin yung lagi tayong pinapakain ng spiritual na pagkain. Lagi tayong nare-remind ng salita ng Diyos. Kasi hindi automatic sa atin ang pag sa Panginoon. Na-realize ba natin? Yung word na stumbling, how Jude used the word stumbling, alam mo yung sabi na stumbling dito? It means that you nahulog ka and hindi mo, hindi mo na kayang tumayo. Yun yung stumbling na ibig sabihin dito. Have we also realized that God will make His people blameless? Blameless. Na-realize ba natin yung word na Blameless. If you give me access to your email, if you give me access to your social media accounts, to your phones, would you be found blameless? See, no one, not even one, not even one of us can make himself or herself holy in the eyes of God. No one, not even one, is able to persevere in faith, but only God is able to do these things. Your pride would let you praise yourself and give glory to yourself. But the truth is, you are unable to persevere and be holy. If the church was able to keep themselves in the love of God, Jude says, it is actually God who kept you so you can keep yourself in His love. So unless you realize these things, you won't be humbled by the power of God. That is the right attitude. That should be the right disposition of a sinner. Are you so humbled by the truth of God? Every time you hear His word, every time you read His word, are you humbled? Are you humbled by what God promises in His word that He can keep us? That despite of our sinfulness, God promises that we will not finally fall. We may fall, but we will get back up. But, we will, but, but because God is able to keep us, we will not jump in head first and swim around for a good long while. Now, isn't that worth celebrating, brothers and sisters? This calls for a celebration, knowing that God is able to keep us. And knowing that when Christ returns, we will see each other blameless. Isn't that worth praising God for? That should give us motivation, friends. Your problem, there are times when we talk about praising God, isa pa to, because of our sins, again, when we talk about praising God, when we talk about worship, we think that there's no joy associated with it. That's because, I mean, I mean it's clear. When Jude says here, we will be presented with great joy. Hindi nawawala ang joy. Hindi nawawala ang rejoicing. And if we see, if we don't see the joy in praising God, that's because we fail to see Christ. There is no joy in our idea of praise and worship apart from Christ. There is no rejoicing apart from Christ. You will not rejoice in the fact that you are full of sin and that God, and that God hates sin. In that God punishes sin. But because of the redemption that was accomplished by Christ, friends, you are not condemned anymore. Hindi na natin hihintayin yun eh. For us to be blameless, mga kapatid, I want to assure you, you are, hindi na kayo, uh, you, are, you are being made holy, kayo ay blameless sa mata ng Panginoon. You are not condemned anymore. And you are blameless because of the righteousness of Christ. Knowing that there is no more guilt. Knowing that there comes a time when our tears will be wiped away. Knowing that there will come a time when we can stand before the presence of God without any blemish, without any sin. Friends, that should, it should give us great joy. Hindi natin pwedeng ilayo ang pag sa Panginoon at yung joy at rejoicing. 
That is my challenge. Make it your life's ambition to find great joy in praising and worshiping God. And we, we, we rejoice, you know. We rejoice not just because of what Christ has done. We rejoice because of Christ himself. Of himself. Shamismo, God himself becomes our ultimate joy. As we nagiging discipline sa atin, sa ating spiritual na katawan, as we praise Him, Siya mismo yung nagiging joy natin. And if God is our ultimate joy, that is what, cause, that is what should cause us ultimately to praise Him more. I mean, more than having the knowledge that all glory, majesty, dominion, and authority belongs to Him in eternity, past, and future, our reason why we praise and worship Him, and why we, our reason why we worship and praise Him is Himself. Sha. Now, what is the practical application for this? I mean, you, you can examine yourself and see whether you are living a life that that is a visible that is a that is a that is representative of Christ that is representative of a worshiper of Christ ganun ba ang pamumuhay natin na, na sinasabuhay natin yung yung joy na yon yung praise and worship na yon sa lahat ng ating ginagawa that whatever we do whether we eat or drink we glorify the lord pero you know kung ano yung immediate practical application talaga nito ni Jude is his audience is the entire church. Itong praise and worship na to, yung, yung doxology na pinapakita niya sa atin dito na kailangan gayahin ng church, ay sa konteksto ng worship. Tayo ay gathered for God's praise. As a church, we worship every Lord's Day. Mandato natin to. Ito ay mandate ng Panginoon, kaya tayo nag-gather is to praise Him. The more we hear the word of God, the more we ascribe to Him all the glory. The more we engage ourselves in corporate worship, the more the world gets uninterest. It gets uninteresting for us. Hindi na tayo interested sa mundo, sa mga temptations ng mundo, sa sobrang focus natin sa ating praise and worship, sa sobrang ligaya natin na mismo ang Diyos na ang object of our praise. And He is our ultimate joy as we praise and worship Him. Alam niyo yung mga Puritans noong 17th century, the reason why they are known to be so, marami nagsasabi that they are so legalist. Sobra yung legalism daw nila. Okay? Na sinasabi na, kasi for them, we should not do any recreational activities during the Sabbath. Okay, kunwari maglaro or whatever, you watch a movie. Para sa mga Puritans, sobrang strict nila dito. Any recreational activities, sports or whatever, sobrang strict nila rito. No? Doon sila kilala. And you know why? You know what their reason is? For the Puritans, it is for them to avoid the trivial joy that the world can give. And just focus on praising God and the joy that is found in Him. You can do that in other days. But this is the day. This is not family day. This is the Lord's day. And He has given us this day to praise and worship Him. To develop in your sinful hearts that your ultimate joy is not the world, but Christ. So friends, all glory majesty, dominion, and authority belong to the only wise God who through our Lord Jesus Christ keeps us safe and one day present us joyfully in all glory. And to all of us, church, we can all share in lifting our heads, our faces to heaven, and shouting with Jude and say, Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, O Lord, for this, for your word. Marami pong salamat, O Lord, that, Lord, despite of the sins that we have, Lord, the remaining sins that we have, salamat, Panginoon, sa paalala 
that you have already in Christ that you have justified us that you do not see our sins anymore for we are covered by the accomplished righteousness of your son and so Lord allow us to be humbled by the truth to be humbled by who you are and what you have done and allow us O Lord to meditate on this to meditate on your promises and remember O Lord who we were apart from Christ and now who we are in Christ that there are a lot of reasons to, to rejoice and to praise you Lord may you give us strength to make it our life's ambition to find great joy in Christ to make you our ultimate joy we thank you O Lord for the privilege to worship you this morning we pray all this in Jesus name Amen